Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be about creating stylized hairstyles for your characters in Clip Studio Paint, presented by Chris Abug. Before we begin the webinar, there are some housekeeping items that we'd like to go through. The webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. Question and answer session will be during the last 15 minutes of the webinar. Attendees can ask questions in the GoToWebinar question box right away. Due to time constraints, not all questions will be answered. This webinar will be recorded and the recording will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. The panelists for this webinar are Mario Quinones, myself, Joanna Brower, and Chris Abad. For those of you who connect with us for the very first time or have never heard about Clip Studio Paint, Clip Studio Paint is your only one solution for stunning, ready to publish illustrations, comics, manga, and animations. Learn more at clipstudio.net forward slash and graphicsly.com. Also, we'd like to invite you to share the webinar through your Instagram stories. We'll be sharing your Instagram stories if you tag us as hashtag webinar at chrisabag at graphicsly at wacom and at clip studio official. Chrisa is an artist and animator who recently jumped full time into the freelance illustration world. Previously, she worked in the video game industry for seven years. She loves painting beautiful fantasy characters driven illustration. She also streams her art process on Twitch and makes tutorials on Patreon and YouTube. So with that, I'll leave you with Krisa and her presentation, Creating Stylized Hairstyles for Your Characters in Cliff Studio Paint. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, welcome in, you guys. I'm Krissa. Um, like, uh, like was said, I'm a digital artist. I've been in the game industry. I think it's actually been eight years of doing various things in the video game industry. But recently, I've transitioned into mostly independent art, and I thought I would just very briefly kind of give you guys a look, if you aren't familiar with me, of the type of artwork that I tend to do. So this is kind of my my jam, is a lot of fantasy and kind of whimsical artwork. Um, every once in a while I'll do like a little book cover commission or something, but for the most part it is independent artwork and, and kind of just drawing what I want. and. I've been lucky enough that people seem to uh, enjoy that from me. So with that little in intro, let's just get right into um, painting hair. <laughs> so uh, I've actually done a tutorial of this on my YouTube, but it was a really quick tutorial. It was for Clip Studio. And in this webinar, I hope that I can show a little bit more of my process for um, coming up with actual hairstyles and you know show you more of that process basically so before we get into drawing hair i want to touch on a couple principles that i think just are important to know when we start drawing hair and that is first the general shapes that we're going to use so i just kind of call these swooshy shapes um so hair is this kind of like I love drawing hair because it's this kind of abstract thing. And because I have a background as a visual effects artist, hair, I think of it kind of like smoke. It has these same principles that like smoke has and it can be really flowy. So um, the very basic sort of shape that we're gonna be using for a lot of hair is this kind of swooshy shape. Now, something very important to keep in mind is you wanna avoid parallel lines when you make these hair shapes. So I do not wanna make a shape that is parallel like this. You see this even space between the hair chunks or the hair lines, I guess. This is not 
not appealing design generally. So we're gonna wanna try and avoid that. And to avoid that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make an effort to make some sections that are maybe a little bit further apart, a little bit wider, and then some that are gonna be pushing in a little bit. And something that can help you kind of, if it helps you wrap your brain around it, you can start thinking about like the forces at play when it comes to what is acting on the hair. Or you can think of hair as like a ribbon, but we'll get into that a little bit more later on. Oh, sorry, if you can hear a, a, a motorcycle in the background. Oh no. But anyway, so trying to avoid parallel lines is the first like super basic thing. Swooshy shapes avoid parallel lines. So this is kind of an illustration that's talking about that same thing. Now, another shape that I wanna talk about that I find very helpful is when the hair is twisting around itself. Now, it's actually very easy to do. So I've made my swoopy, my swoopy, <laughs> swooshy shape. Um, it looks, oops, it looks kind of like a, a fish hook, right? Um, what I want to communicate with this shape is that the hair is twisting around in on itself. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to draw the other side of the hair and just let it come down and meet the original line. And then I'm going to continue drawing this line on the opposite side of the hook. So this kind of uh, is an illusion. <laughs> we're, that's what we're doing as 2D artists, right? We are uh, illusionists. We are trying to make something look like it's 3D, even though it's 2D. Um, so the hair is coming around wrapping around and then this little tip of hair that's wrapping under here is going to peek out on the other side okay so let's just see so it's coming around wrapping around and then peeking out up here so this is kind of uh showing that as well so the blue is one side of the hair the red is the other side of the hair and then this, you see how the blue comes back around so that's just kind of a handy tool to have when you're going to be drawing hair. Something else that I think is very important is to draw your hair in chunks. Now we are working in a stylized sort of approach that tends to be how I draw and especially how I like to approach hair. So we do not want this. We don't want like super hairy, like I know what's called hair guys, but we don't want really like hairy, just repeating lines. It gets really messy and it's it's kind of hard to make it look uh, appealing this way. I mean, there are certain styles where this can be okay, but um, that's not the style we're going for in this uh, webinar. So the way I like to do it is I draw hair in chunks. This is kind of a rough uh, example of that. And you can see something that's very important to keep in mind when you're drawing hair in chunks is you want to work big, medium, small. This is a general design principle that you're gonna want to keep in mind for everything, but especially for hair, because hair can get a little bit complicated. You can get really uh, wrapped up in it when you are, you know, getting into all the details of the hair strands. It can get a little hairy, if you know what I mean. But anyway, so you can see, sorry, <laughs> you can see green for medium chunks, and then we have next to it a larger red chunk, medium green chunk, and then I threw in a smaller blue chunk right here and a small blue chunk. You wanna just keep the variety. And if you ever notice, like if I look at this chunk of hair right here and I'm like, oh, actually these are a little bit too much the same size, I can just go in and adjust that just to add a little more variation, okay? So that is the two uh, kind of basic things that I wanted to touch on before we get started into actually drawing hair is um, the shapes and then draw the hair in chunks, okay? So let's move on to part two. Um, so I guess we are still gonna be talking a little bit about 
uh, what you need to keep in mind. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do before you draw your hair is you need to figure out where the hair is coming from. It's coming from a skull. And if you, so I like to kind of draw in the skull before I start drawing the hair. Um, if you find yourself having any trouble with this, you can always include Studio Paints. A really cool resource that's available is these 3D models. So you could drag in a 3D model and move it around, adjust it to exactly the angle you need, and then just trace over, or maybe you don't even trace over. If you just want to draw the hair, but you need a base for it, you could pull this in, trace over top, or don't trace over top. You can actually turn this layer down and then move on to a new layer. So that tool is, it's a handy tool that's available to you. If you don't wanna go through the trouble of drawing your own skull. <laughs> so with that in mind, where is the hair coming from? So the hair, this, uh, I think that the first thing you should probably start out from, start out with, start out with, is the hairline. So let's say this character, we can just give her kind of a, a, rough, a rough hairline here, right? So it's kind of good to sort, at least roughly figure this out. It doesn't have to be perfect. So kind of a hair, a hairline going on. Um, and we might want to turn this down later as we go. Apparently I drew on the same layer though. Oh no, let's move that to its own layer, shall we? Okay, hairline, now. Where is the hair coming from? The hair, if it's a ponytail or the hair is slicked back, the hair could be coming from the front. So it could be coming from this hairline back. Now, this is not a very good, uh, this is not a good design right here, you guys. This is, this is not demonstrating big, medium, and small chunks. This is simply arrows to show you where the hair is coming from, okay? So this is just demonstration purposes. So it could be coming from the front if the hair is slicked back, or if the character has a part, you can draw in the part and maybe the hair is gonna be coming from the part. It's just good to kind of figure out like, okay, where are we starting, right? Where's the starting point? If it's short hair, often short hair, like I'm talking like a pixie cut or like sometimes boys haircuts, they will actually come from back here. They'll come from the, the crown of the head and then they will swoop forward. So they it might be coming forward like this, okay? So figure out where the hair is coming from. Next, do, 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 do. We have to figure out where the hair is flowing to. So we kind of covered this a little bit. So where is the hair flowing to? And for this one, I want to actually, we're gonna actually start drawing hair, you guys. It's very exciting. So um, where the hair is flowing to, it's important to keep in mind points of tension. So points of tension are like, you could, uh, for example, if there's a if there is an elastic, so let's say we're gonna draw a girl with a ponytail. Okay, so there's two points of tension that we're starting out with. There's the points of tension. Where is the hair coming from? So this is the first point of tension. Where is it going to? It's being pulled into the elastic. Okay, so this this is the first point of tension. It's all bunching up, being pulled back into the elastic. Next to keep in mind, is there wind? Or I guess if the character is underwater or is there, they're just like in the ether, maybe their hair is floating around, what forces are acting on it? Or is, is the character just kind of stationary and is there gravity? So I'm gonna lean into, okay, this character has long, heavy hair, um, there's gravity acting on it. So I'm going to, sketch in the ponytail being pulled down because there's gravity acting on the hair, okay? 
And when there's gravity acting on the hair, it's very important or at least satisfying to make sure to let the hair interact with the solid objects that it comes in contact with. So because the gravity is pulling the hair down and then the hair hits the shoulder, that means the hair is going to um, react to hitting the shoulder because it rests on the shoulder and then maybe it continues its journey down depending on how long the hair is. Okay. There we go. So it's really rough, but a good, I actually like to keep my, uh, my initial, all my initial sketches are pretty rough, especially for hair. And um, I think that's very important. Keep your sketches loose when it comes to drawing hair, at least in the beginning, because um, it helps you not get too tied up in the details and it helps you just keep the flow. And if you need a little bit of help keeping your sketches loose, because I know it's really easy to get really caught up in details. Um, one way that really helps me keep my sketches loose at this early stage is to use a actually a slightly larger brush. And I'm using the transparent watercolor brush for those of you who are curious. It's a very basic brush. It's kind of just a, a circle brush. It doesn't have too much tapering. It just has a bit of opacity. So that's what I like to use to sketch. It keeps it loose. It lets me flow and yeah i like it <laughs> and then also something to keep in mind is that when i sketch with a larger brush like this you can i like to instead of using a eraser um, what i like to do is i like to set my hotkey to switch to the transparent palette over here so i'm constantly switching between the color palette and the transparent palette and the shortcut for that is uh, C. C is the shortcut for that. C for cool shortcut. Okay, you guys. <laughs> um, all right. So let's move on to. Oh, I didn't do the line art. Actually, I'll show you a little bit how I do the line art. Might as well do a little line art, right? So let's do a little bit of line art, although I'm not gonna spend too much time on the line art for this because line art does tend to take me a bit of time. So for line art, basically I want to just continue to, to continue to emphasize the points of tension with my line weight. Um, so what that means is that as I'm drawing in the line art, I want thicker lines to be coming to this ponytail. I want my line thickness to like maybe start out thin um, over like in the middle of the hair and then to be thicker where it's coming to this point of tension. Um, it just kind of helps sell that, that pull that's happening. And let's try and uh, try and be quick about this so that we can get to other hairstyles. But this is my basic process for line art. Um, nothing too fancy, really. It's kind of just me coming in, and I like to use a, a little bit of a rougher brush. It's actually one of my custom brushes. It's called the Cressa Messy Ink brush, and um, it has just a little bit of tooth to it. It looks pretty solid, but if I zoom in, it's a little bit more uh, textured, and it makes me, I don't know, it makes me feel like I'm drawing with something between a pen and a pencil, which I like. There's also a little bit of stabilization to it. Oops. Okay. So, something else to keep in mind when you're doing your line art, uh, especially for hair, because again, hair can get a little bit complex, especially as you start adding in all of these inner details and inner lines is generally for your line art, outlines should be thicker, and then the lines that are on the inside should be a bit thinner. So these like details inside should be a little bit thinner. 
and then the hairline has a little bit of this like squiggle action going on all right something like that cool so now we have a basic ponytail and we move on to the next step uh oh <laughs> here's this very helpful demonstration that i forgot to do but it's basically just showing the points of tension in a ponytail so it is there's like an elastic and then the hair is being pulled into the ponytail elastic and from basically both directions um, it bunches it let's see so let's move on actually to some other hairstyles okay let's do some more hairstyle sketches i want to talk about uh, different types of hair, different like lengths. So what if a character has like a short bob? So <clears throat> when it comes to shorter hair, shorter hair can be a little bit, so this was long hair and it was very affected by gravity. Uh, if you know anything about, if you've had different lengths of hair, you will know that short hair is a lot lighter and so it will be a lot more bouncy and sometimes it will even be curlier um side note story time uh, i used to have super duper long hair and um like hair down to like my butt and then i went and got it cut really short and I was astounded. Not only was I astounded because the hair was so much lighter, but I found out I had curly hair. I had no idea I had curly hair because my my the weight of my long hair had just pulled it straight. Um, so curly hair can sometimes be a little bit bouncier, or sorry, not, well, yes, curly hair can be bouncier, of course, but short hair can be a little bit curlier. Um, so going along with the short hair sketch, what I'm doing, is first I put in the part like we talked about. So I put in the part. And now what I'm doing is I am drawing the hair flowing out from that part. And something else that I like to keep in mind, I'm trying to draw a little bit in chunks. Again, I think I want to give this hairstyle some bangs. So I'm going to draw where the bangs come from. And to sometimes to do bangs, what I like to do if they're straight across bangs, I'm going to um, draw all together and then I'll break it apart later. So drawing the bangs, I'm going to bring in some little curly cues down here and I want this hair to come out the front, kind of flip out and flip in. And this part is a little bit um, intuitive and I know that when I first started trying to answer the question of how do how to draw hair, how do I draw hair? Because it's a question I would get a lot. I had to really sit down and think about it. I think hair is one of those things where as an artist, you're you're either like, oh my gosh, hair is my favorite thing to draw, or you're like, I don't I don't get it. There's no rules. How do you draw hair? And I fall in the category of like, hair is my favorite thing to draw. And so sometimes it's hard to answer the question of how do you how do you draw hair? Because to me, it's like, oh, I feel it. It's a little bit intuitive. So it's taken a lot of thought to try and like figure out how to how to teach it. But hopefully, hopefully you're getting a, a little bit of the idea. So again, I'm making those sort of like swooshy shapes that we talked about at the beginning. And I'm drawing in kind of chunks, like here's a chunk, here's a chunk, um, little chunks. And something that I like to do when I'm drawing out from a part like this is I really like to think about it in chunks. So you can notice these almost like square as shapes. And again, it's all very loose. I'm trying to not sketch like too slowly. I'm trying to be really quick with my sketches. Um, this is just to get the general shape of the hair it doesn't have to be perfect we can figure out the actual like details and shapes when it comes to the hair in the line art or a more refined sketch later on okay so there is kind of a short a sketch of a short hairstyle now let's do a long hairstyle that's down and not in a ponytail so again i'm going to start with the part 
like that. And then I'm going to, actually, I want this character to have a part, like I want her hair to go down behind her ears. And I also want her to have a little bit of a cowlick in the front. So to do that, I'm gonna draw, let's zoom in a little bit so you can see. I'm gonna draw kind of a little triangle shape and I'm just gonna kind of shade it in. And then from there, the hair is gonna swoop down and tuck behind the ear. So this little triangle shape is the little cowlick. And I'm gonna do it again on the other side. It's a little cowlick, but this time, because this side has more hair on it, I'm just gonna make the cowlick maybe just a little bigger, just a little bit more emphasized. And then I also want this hair to kind of tuck down. And then I think what I want to do for this hairstyle is I want this hair to overlap the hair that's tucking under the, the ear on this side. So that's what, it, what I'm doing is I'm having it overlap over here. And you'll notice I kind of have these corners in the hair as I draw it. And that just kind of helps me continue to think about the hair in like chunks. And it helps me balance out the hairstyle with like curves or sorry, curves versus like straights and angles. Otherwise, it's really easy to make the hair just all tons and tons of curves. I mean, granted, it is a lot of curves, but um, it's just me trying to like balance it out and add more design elements. So again, this hair coming down and you'll notice that the hair is sitting a little bit off of the skull. That's because the hair has a bit of volume. And when it's a side part like this, there's gonna be more volume on the side that has more hair. So this side's gonna sit a little higher. Like this, something like that. And again, it's rough, but that's okay. It's rough. And this hair, again, we're gonna have it interact with the shoulder because of gravity and like the shoulder being a solid thing <laughs> that the hair sits on. And then I think for this, this hair, I want it to end in, hmm, it's very long hair. We'll just end it in like a, a kind of something like that. And I think I'll just fill this in. Yeah. All right. And moving on to another hairstyle, let's do like a pixie cut. So this might be my favorite because it's like my hairstyle these days. So what I'm going to do, so this hair is going to come from the back. So um, this is a style I feel like that can get a little complicated weirdly. Uh, I think because we get caught up in like lots of spiky shapes maybe. Um, and it's sometimes if you're not used to drawing this hairstyle because you draw a lot of long hairstyles, it can be a little bit, uh, a little bit confusing when you first start, but we're gonna draw this pixie cut like this. This pixie cut is kind of voluminous. It's a little curly, not too curly, but kind of wavy, I guess. And then it's it's coming forward is the important thing to keep in mind. So it's coming from the back of the head and it's swooping forward. Something like that. Rough, but a decent enough shape. Okay. And then this one, let's do some like super duper curly hair. So I'm going to, this one, um, when it comes to like really curly hair, that's like super voluminous, like kind of like a, an Afro. I really am going with a lot of uh, intuition and keeping it pretty loose. And when it comes to really, really curly hair, you will see this a little bit later, as hopefully we'll have time. Um, I might need to speed up a little. But when it comes to curly hair, I am probably not going to rely on line art as much because I 
like to, well, first of all, even though I line art a lot of my hair, I also like to sometimes draw outside of the line art when I'm doing very final painting stages. I don't like to be totally constricted to it. And when it's super duper curly hair, especially if it has like a really, really curly texture, I prefer to just paint it with a textured brush and hopefully we can have a chance to do that. But right now I'm just trying to get the shape and then we'll move into the next step. Okay, so we have like kind of rough, generally general rough hairstyle sketches super loose, uh, but that's okay. So let's move into, again, since line art takes me a while, uh, I don't know how, how far I'm gonna get on any of these, but we'll do our best and we'll move on to uh, color if we need to skip ahead a little bit because the line art process is basically the same as I showed before. So you're going to want to Again, think of your points of tension, add a little bit more thickness where there's points of tension or even some thickness to where there is shadow. So for example, here where the hair part is meeting the, the bangs, what I'm going to do to emphasize that is I'm going to actually add a little bit of thickness right there. I think that that will make it look like there's a little bit more shadow to, uh, to the line art without actually having even shaded anything. So I'm gonna add a little bit of thickness. This is gonna be pretty rough, you guys, but that's okay. And even though I'm line arting, or rather this is kind of more of a, it's a bit more of a, a refined sketch rather than a line art, I guess, but um, it is it is kind of the my my end process my line art tends to be a little bit rougher. Um, not that rough, especially when you zoom out, it's not rough. But if you were to zoom in, you would be like, oh boy, that's a that's a pretty rough, rough line art you got there. Um, but it's, it's, it's okay, I think it adds to the appeal and it helps me not get too stiff when it comes to the hairstyles. It helps them continue to flow. And you'll notice I'm doing a lot of like, I do a lot of undos in my line art. It's probably a bit of a bad habit to be honest, but when it comes to hair especially, I want to try and get as much as I can the full line that I want without having to do like, I don't wanna be doing like little bits, you know? I wanna try and get the full swoop as much as I can. So that's why I tend to do quite a few undos with my line art, especially in hair. All right. I think maybe what we'll do is we will, we'll line art this one and then we will jump forward to colors because line arting does just kind of take a while. and time flies in these webinars. Okay. Okay, so, you know, rough line art. I think that uh, it would be good to go in and add a little bit of smaller like detail lines, but not actually super necessary. Um, I think I do want a little bit here. Something like that. Moving with the flow. Okay. So that's my general process for line art again. And so now here is 
here is my pre-baked <laughs> line art for you guys. Um, you will notice down here with the really curly hair, I left it out. Like basically I kind of just scribbled in rough line arts for where her skull is and where I want the part to be. But um, the rest of her hair we're going to do with the color stage. So colors, let's create a new layer underneath the line art. Um, let me make sure that I'm going to be on that correct layer. I think I am. Okay. So for the colors, I'm going to use just the G pen. Oopsies. Because my line art is pretty rough, um, my, the way that I do this is pretty basic. I don't use fancy fill tools when my line art is this rough. Although if you have a little bit more of a, a cleaner line art that, and cleaner shape, um, you can use like some of the the select and fill tools. Those can be very, very handy. Um, for this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to outline the hair quickly. And again, probably not spend too much time on this because it's pretty basic, but just using the G pen tool, super basic default brush. It's also like one of the best brushes ever. Like this. And then I'm just going to use the bucket. Oh no. There's a hole. <laughs> it's gonna dye my whole canvas. I see it. Oh, okay, we're gonna wait for a second. Here's the hole. Okay, so that's my basic fill process. But while we're here, um, I want to go over the, how I'm going to do this hair. Since it's like super curly, so let's grab a color and first i'm just going to fill in again with the the g pen and now i'm going to grab a textured brush this is a brush that uh i can't remember where i got it it was in a brush pack that i got somewhere but it's pretty basic i mean it's basically it's kind of like a textured rake sort of brush like that. Um, and so what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to fill in a bit more just the bulk of the hair with the, the G pen. And then I'm going to grab that textured brush and bring in this texture to create the shape. That way um, this curl is kind of communicated without me having to do a bunch of little line art. And I feel like when I've tried to do line art on super duper curly hair, uh, it, it I always end up painting over it anyway, basically is how it goes. So I found that it tends to be better to just use a, use a textured brush to directly paint the color when it comes to really curly hair for my process anyway, okay. And this might take a little bit of time, so, but you can kind of see the basic process, just painting in. Um, you can start out really rough. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then once you have the essential like shape that you want, you can add more uh, refined shapes. So I'm trying to get to that point as quickly as I can. Okay, and so find adding more of like the refined curly shapes, you can just reduce the size and start adding in some of the curly shapes. on the edges of the hair. Be 
because if you keep the rakes a little bit too, if you keep the rakes too large at the end of the process, it looks really, really coarse. And that's why you kind of have to kind of finish it off on the edges with the smaller brush. And then it looks a little softer. Okay, <laughs> so that's kind of the basic process, you know, not perfect, but we're going to jump ahead to where it is perfect. It's a duh. Um, so something that I just realized is that I pre-did the gradients, but I want to show you guys how I do the gradients um, real quick. So, cause this is a very important part of my process. So we started out with a flat color, right? And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to the soft airbrush. I'm going to take my flat color, move it up and to the left. And I'm also going to move the slider a little bit to the warmer direction. And of course you can change this depending on if they have some specific sort of ombre or something. But generally, the ends of the hair are going to be lighter, like this. Ends of the hair are going to be lighter, and then closer to the roots are going to be darker, like this. Okay? And already, like, we haven't even shaded anything, but it already adds a lot more depth to the, the hair. And so you can kind of see I did that on the other hairstyles as well. So it's darker. Um, down here, I would actually want to make it a little darker. It's darker down here, and then over here, it's a darker brown, right? And then on the curly hair, same thing by the roots, darker and then lighter around the edges. Okay. Okay. Now let's move into shading so the way that i'm going to shade is we want to um we want to think about large shapes first so i'm going to create a new layer hard light layer mode and then i'm going to clip to layer below so this is the clip to layer below button right here and i'm just going to use kind of my <clears throat> default this can change according to whatever the environment is um, so if the, if the ambient, 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 if the ambient light is like blue, then the shadow will be more tinted blue. If the ambient light is red, like if they're in a red room or something, then it's going to be more red. Um, purple is kind of just a general purplish grayish. It's just kind of a general, I don't know. It just always looks pretty good to me. So we're just going to, we're just going to default there for now. Plus my page is purplish. So um, I'm just going to start blocking in. Again, we're using the G pen brush. I'm going to block in some shadows. Um, when it comes to bangs, bangs that curl down like this tend to have a little bit of a, a shadow right there. And remember that the hair chunks are curling away from the light when they come into the part. So there tends to be a little a little shadow going into the part. Um, but then also remember the head is uh, an orb. The head is a sphere. So you're still shading as if you're shading a sphere when it comes to the top of the head. And right now my light is coming from the screen right, if you didn't catch on to that. I'm sure you all did. You're all geniuses. Where the hair is curling under, there's a shadow. Where the hair is curling under here, there's a shadow because it's curling down. Curling down. Under here is a shadow. Under here is a shadow. Um, under here. And then you can, once you have the basic shadows in, you can start 
adding in a little bit more like detail shadows. So detail shadows that are indicating a little bit of like where the hair is overlapping on top of itself, maybe a little bit of like strands here or there. But this is basically my process. And generally I do not blur the shadows on hair. When it comes to skin, I, you know, will smudge the shadows depending on what type of shadow it is. But when it comes to hair, I like to keep the shadows hard. And what I do is I like to keep the shadows hard and then later on I just refine the shadows by nicking in some little like strands here or there. And this is very rough obviously, but I would just take my time if I was doing this like for real. <laughs> to add in any like little detail shadows that I want after, only after I have the basic shadows figured out and blocked in. So work from big to small, big to small. Okay. So that is the basic process for my shadows. I think that for this shadow that's curling under for the bang, I actually might, I know I just said that I don't usually soften my shadows, but I think for that shadow, I might, I might soften that a bit um, and blur it just a little bit because it is kind of a smooth transition down. I think it would be good to blur that one, but otherwise I don't. <laughs> okay. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Um, highlights, one of my favorite parts, you guys. So we have our shadows in. Ta da! Now we're going to add highlights. So over here, this is our layers. I know it looks like we have a lot, but don't worry. We're only worried about this one and this one. Um, create a new layer on top of your shadows layer. Clip to layer below. Turn the layer mode to overlay. And now, again, this depends on the color of your light source. Yellow warm lights tend to be pretty normal, natural looking, but you can do whatever. Um, I think that for this one, I'm going to go for, hmm, what, what pen do I want to go for? I think I'm going to go for my textured messy ink one. Oops, sorry about that. My textured messy ink brush pen. And now here's my trick, you guys. So this is super easy and super effective. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scribble. Scribble, 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 where I want the highlights generally to be, okay? Scribble. And I know it looks crazy, but we'll, we'll don't worry, we got this. So scribble, I want the highlights. I say that the, the sun is kind of hitting like this and it spreads out over the hair like that. Now I'm gonna to switch to an eraser, or not an eraser, but the that transparent swatch, remember, C is the magic shortcut. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start erasing kind of this U shape out of my highlights, all right? Erase a little bit of a U shape. And you can notch in some of these like, uh, these like hair, I don't know, hair notches, hair texture notches. I don't have a word for them. It's like brushed metal. Um, actually, brushed metal and hair have a lot of similarities when it comes to how they react to light and reflections. But it's really, it's pretty simple method to get some like shiny looking hair like this, and it's pretty quick. And then obviously you can go in and add a lot more care and detail um, as you go, maybe later on in the process if you want. And then something I might do once I'm at like this stage where it's like, okay, we have the basic shape going on for the highlight. Maybe what I'll do is I will add in like some highlighted strands that are coming out here or there that I think would look nice. 
Like I kind of think that light hitting along the edge of this chunk of hair would be cool. Maybe coming off of here. You don't want to get too crazy with it, but at the same time, uh, I think it's fine to like experiment and just like see what looks good. It's kind of my whole process is a lot of experimentation and seeing what looks good, especially with like the style I'm going for. All right, so that's the basic highlight process. Um, if it's too much highlight, cause it's like, wow, that girl really does look like she has a chrome head. You can always reduce the opacity of that layer. You know, maybe make it a little more subtle if that's what you want. So here is some highlighted hair. Uh, something that you can do that I like to do, this is like my final stage in the process, is I like to occasionally come in and on a new layer that's on top of everything, it's even on top of the line art, you guys. So on a new layer, what I will do, and I'm again, I'm using my kind of rough brush, I will paint on top of everything. Like I said earlier, sometimes I like to just like not paint in the line art, you know? Sometimes I want to paint outside because hair is this thing that's like, it's it's it can be a little wild. And like, I want some hair strands coming out here and maybe it just, I just feel like it looks nicer if I can let the hair be sort of free and uh, not too constricted to the line art at the end of the process. Now you don't have to do this. It's not necessary. There's a lot of styles where you do stay in the line art. Uh, I personally have never been very good at staying in the line art, but um, this is a, you know, your choice whether you want to try painting on top of everything. Um, I have found that as I have grown as an artist, one thing that's really helped me improve is not being afraid to break the line art, paint on top of stuff. Um, so it could be worth exploring. If, uh, if you're interested, you can be brave, you guys. Paint outside that line art. So, yeah, that's my basic process. So I think, like, uh, if you have some questions that you want to read out, I'm ready. Thank you so much, Krisha. This has been really wonderful. I didn't want to interrupt because we are all uh, keeping our eyes straight to the work that you've been sharing. So once again, thank you. And also, we want to thank everyone who's been uh, who's joined us today. Uh, there's people from all over the world, so I'm just gonna say like get a quick uh, look at the question panel. People from United States, Mexico, Venezuela, Slovenia, Canada, New Zealand, Argentina, Colombia, uh, Belarus, uh, Portugal, UK, Hungary. <laughs> Greenland, uh, Ireland, Indonesia, etc. etc. Et so once again, thank you all also to the people who have been sharing their Instagram stories with a hashtag. Uh, so uh, let's go with uh, some of the questions because there's a lot of questions. Um, how do you do the, um, the reflections for a hair style just like the Afro? Um, so because uh, the afro is like more coarse there isn't so much reflections um mm -hmm. it, the reflections tend to act on like more smooth hair what you can do what i like to do sometimes with the afro is um let's see if we can get a where is this layer so the overlay um so you can kind of see it here actually so something that's cool about the afro that kind of helps the uh, like it look really soft is you can add a like Fresnel sort of look so maybe we let's just try it and see how it looks uh, I think it could be cool so adding a bit of more to like the edges so this isn't really reflections 
but it's more of like when you see something that's like really soft it kind of lightens on the edges i tend to observe that on on like really curly hair um especially if it's really textured i guess that's a good thing to keep in mind is if it's the more textured it is probably the less like reflective it's going to be mm -hmm. and nathaniel king says and at a question just want to say this is really good teaching and the jokes are hilarious i'm really enjoying <laughs> this lesson so you should, uh, the jokes you are hilarious come to my twitch streams <laughs> <laughs> definitely uh, another question from uh, Ivan, he says, uh, thanks for the amazing seminar. Do you consider that there are important differences between uh, painting female hair and male hair? If so, would you be, what would be your advice for emphasizing those differences? Um, so admittedly, I paint mostly women, but I did try and include like, I know it's still kind of a girly pixie cut, <laughs> but um, <laughs> the, let's see, male hair, I mean, I think you would generally follow this, this same process, but always look at like reference. If you are not sure about something, look at reference, look up like male haircut reference, and then you can use the same principles that we used here, but just apply it to male hair cuts and um yeah remember in the the big medium small actually looking at this piece right here this haircut i think that the there's a little bit too much uh well now i'm just being nitpicky but big medium small in the like hair chunks is still going to be super important in short hairstyles so yeah um, if you find that like shiny hair looks too feminine, you can always reduce the shininess. I don't know if it looks too feminine, but maybe uh, I could see someone maybe saying that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I don't know if that was a good answer or not, but. No, definitely. And another question, this one from Eduardo. Any tip for dynamic hair, like hair in movement? Mm. Yeah, so hair and movement i'm so i you're gonna want to lean into again like the shapes that we talked about at the beginning um oh hey <laughs> hair and movement so these kinds of shapes i think that something that uh may help you out when it comes to hair and movement is kind of just practicing flowy flowy shapes and like following them along again almost like you're painting like incense smoke but remember that just because hair is like flying it all over the place and in movement um it should still kind of have a, a general shape so like this ponytail is like flowing out because of the wind or whatever but it still kind of clumps together even though it's like swooshing away so find like the big general flowing shape and then you know work big to small again big to small and think about just the dynamics and try and avoid those parallel lines and that will help make it even more dynamic mm -hmm. and another question about the brushes that you used you mentioned you you were using one of your own brushes uh, is it something that it's available for everyone or um so the my chris and messy ink brush this one is on patreon so that's where that brush lives uh, i don't think i have it anywhere else yet um but the other brushes that i'm using were mostly default i i, I used the um let's see so the transparent watercolor brush here's my basic brushes the transparent watercolor brush which is a default brush uh the smooth watercolor brush which i didn't use much but if i wanted to like smudge some shadows and stuff around i would use this brush um my chris and messy ink brush which is this one that's available on patreon and then uh, this is the one where i'm not sure <laughs> where it exists <laughs> Um, I think it might be part of the friend and pack. 
if you know like who Frendon is, he has a giant Clip Studio paint brush pack available. It might be available in that pack, I think, is where I got it. Mm -hmm. Well, people can also look uh, at the Clip Studio paint assets to find more yeah. brushes as well. And uh, and you showed a 3D um, model uh, on Clip Studio paint. Is it something that you use a lot for your characters? I do sometimes, so not always, but um, I've actually been using them a lot lately. Uh, so usually what I prefer to do is actually take my own reference and just use myself. <laughs> um, but sometimes if I'm working, if I'm trying to work with like a different body type or a male or, um, you know, something like that, I really like to just use the the 3D assets, or if it's like a hand or something, and I just need something really quick, then I will use the uh, yeah the 3D the 3D options, and you can pose it exactly how you want as well, which is super nice. Mm -hmm. And another question is about what are your references or inspiration? How did you manage to learn about hairstyles? Do you have like a huge Pinterest uh, um, hmm. folder or something? I, I do have a huge Pinterest full of hair. Uh, <laughs> it's just called hair, but um, yeah, my inspiration. I mean, I think that like, I for a long time have been really inspired by Loish and hair is like very prominent in a lot of her artwork as well. Um, and also like, I like literally this, this hair right here, like this is what I grew up with for most of my life was like super duper long hair. And so it's, I don't know, hair has just been always something that's been uh, really a big part of my world. And then it's cool to see um, artwork where hair kind of takes on a life of its own and hair really defines a character sometimes like if a character is going through some big sort of change arc you know they might start out with like think about Mulan like she starts out with long hair cuts it short it, it, it's like it's just very central to a character and kind of can can communicate uh, what they're about how they want to be perceived maybe a mental shift I think it's um yeah, it's it's one of my favorite things to draw. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. And another question is about uh, designing a specific hairstyle for a character. Uh, what do you recommend for keeping the the same hairstyle for the character during a whole story? Uh, do you do model sheets or, or similar? Um, well, this is funny because I just talked about changing the hairstyle for a character. Uh, but let's see, do I do model sheets? I mean, I, I don't really, I'm not like a comic artist, but yeah, I have done some model sheets before. I think that what can help is when you're doing a model sheet, um, you know, make sure you're lining up all, this is just for character design in general, right? Make sure you're lining up all of the key features. And if hair is something that's really important, to your character, although it's important to know also that hair changes length um, as the character goes along, depending on the length of the story. But if it's important that they keep the same, like say they have like a short haircut that's like to their chin, um, make note of that. Make note that, okay, their hair reaches to their chin, like that's the length. It shouldn't be longer, it shouldn't be shorter. Um, so I guess that would be my my advice is just take note of like where it relates to certain facial features on the character and try and match those when you draw the character multiple times. Mm -hmm. And one last question uh, that people ask about what was your favorite uh, tool of Clip Studio Paint that helps you to draw uh, hairstyles? Oh man, this is hard. Um, oh. Well, I mean, this is super, this, this is basic, but obviously the layer styles are really helpful, but something, actually, let's go over something real quick. So um, I'm gonna merge these. So sometimes what I will do is 
uh, at the end of a process, if I notice that the hair isn't exactly shaped how I want, like let's say this hair is not fluffy enough for me or something, um, I will merge the layer and then I will come into the liquify, which if you can't find the liquify, by the way, it's under the blend. So if you, you can find the droplet and then you go to the liquify. Um, and then I can just move the hair around to be more of like, to do like a small like shape adjustment if I wanna do that. So I do use that quite a bit for hair, especially like someone said, if hair is like flowing around sometimes, uh, when hair is like flowing out and being acted on by like the wind or something and you go in and you like line art it and then you realize it looks kind of stiff. That's happened to me before. Um, just merging it and doing a little liquify on it can actually make it look a little bit nicer and I can make it look a little bit more flowy just with like nudging, nudging a few like chunks. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a really great tip, um, Krisa. Uh, and just uh, to finish, uh, uh, last advice to anybody who still struggles with drawing hair. Well, uh, last advice, if you need a refresher, I have a video on how to color hair or paint hair on my YouTube channel. <laughs> so make sure to go there. Uh, no, real advice. Um, I think, again, my, my advice is to practice drawing those flowing shapes and look at reference. Those are my two, two advice. Maybe for your warm up, draw some like flowing shapes um, and just kind of find the uh, a smoky or a hair like flow to your lines and get used to that, like that push and pull of those curves. Mm -hmm. Well, with those wise words, uh, we're going to say thank you so much, uh, Krisa. This has been an amazing webinar. Uh, thank you for having me. <laughs> I hope everybody learned something and it was helpful. It was definitely helpful. And also we want to thank you, uh, all of you who joined us today. And another question that was uh, repeated um, a lot is that if this webinar has been recorded and yes uh, it's been recorded and will be uploaded to our youtube channels from clip studio paint channel and graphicsly but also learn more about clip studio paint in our website clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com and of course a huge invitation to follow Krisa on her socials as chrisabag on instagram twitter deviantart patreon uh, her youtube channel there are a lot of great uh, videos Every tutorials yeah right everywhere <laughs> yeah everywhere <I'm> chris about <laughs> everywhere <laughs> yeah and uh, chris's website chrisabug.com so with that uh, again thank you so much we had a great time chrisa uh thank you and thank you all so we hope to see you next time bye 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 bye